coding made so what's up everybody and welcome to your next libgdx tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be checking out some controller input um and uh and we're gonna i'm gonna split this up into two different tutorials so this tutorial we're just gonna check out some uh, button presses and some analog input and the next tutorial we're gonna check out the controller listener um Sorry, it's been so long since the last tutorial. I've been working on my app uh, for the Android and iOS. If you guys are interested in looking at it or playing it, I will have it in the description below. Uh, but anyways, enough jibber jabber. Uh, let's get into the tutorial. So last tutorial, we just set up the controller and we didn't really talk about how it actually worked. So what we want to do, uh, what we've done is we've created a controller class and we want a um, or a controller instance and we just call this controller and in the create method what I said was controller equals controllers dot get controllers dot first so what uh, basically what the get controllers is is it's, it holds an array of our um, it holds an array of how much controllers we actually have. So this is and this is anticipating that I actually have a controller plugged in, and then if I do have a controller plugged in, it's going to select the first controller. So I only have one plugged in, and we're only going to be doing it with one controller input. But if you want to check for multiple controllers, uh, you can um, check uh, you can check so in uh, this get controllers uh, array. So now that we've gotten our controller, we want to do various things with our controller. So to test out if our controller was working, we use the get button command. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say con if controller dot get button, and we're just going to say button one. Then we're going to say position x minus equals move speed times delta. So uh, one thing I should note that in the, I think the last video I was testing with my PS4, my PS4 controller, but I sold my PS4, so I'm back to my DualShock 3. I'm using Motion Enjoy uh, for my input, and I set it to X input for my uh, Xbox 360 input. So basically converts the the PS3 controller to Xbox 360 controller input, which better matches other PC games and such. Uh, so, uh, I've mapped it to that and um, let's just run this. So I'm going to run as a desktop application. Now I'm not using the, I don't know if they really upgraded the controllers. Um, oh, I did something wrong. Oh, see I got an error um, that basically said that my array is empty because my controller is not on. So it's assuming that you have a controller connected. Uh, but it might not be the case so uh, just remember that for when you're making your games so I got this I got this here and we're just going to I'm pressing circle which is the um, button number one that's mapped to this specific controller now other controllers may be different now libgdx is uh, the default the default controls are based on Ouya. Now I don't. They said they were gonna add in Xbox 360 controls, but I'm using the controller extension from the last time I made this to this tutorial. So I don't know if they added it in yet. But for now, we're just gonna be using the Ouya controls for now, and we'll and we'll find workarounds with it. So we can get different buttons and different buttons can be mapped to different things and we can control different buttons in that way and you guys can have fun with that. But what if we want to get some analog input for some movement? So what we're going to do is we're going to say if controller.getAxis and we're going to say OUYA. Now uh, we're going to, uh, there's two different axes, I don't know why they have two different ones I guess ones for something different uh, but let's select I guess let's select, select the first one uh, sorry about that and uh, what we're gonna do is you know what before we even do that we're gonna say system dot out dot print line and we're going to say controller got get axes and we're gonna say we are axis left and it only shows one there 
Okay, and we're just going to run the Java application. And um, I'm going to move this view down a little bit so you can see right down here. So when I move when I move my axes or whatever, we should be seeing something. Uh, I'm not sure why. Okay, I, it was just something that was wrong with my gamepad setup with DS3 tool. But as you can see, oh yeah, I, I had clicked away from the window and um, and I had yeah that's why it wasn't working. Anyways, so when I when I click left and right, nothing. Um, you see the different values, and when you when I go up you see negative one and when I press down you see the value one so with the OUYA setup it seems as though it mixes up the x-axis and the y-axis it's different than the sorry about that again it's different than the Xbox 360's version so what we're gonna do is let's stop this and so what we're gonna do is we're going to say okay so if Controller dot get axis Ouya axis left X is less than we're gonna set our um we're gonna set our dead zone to twenty five. So let's make a float and let's call it dead zone and when it's past this particular dead zone then we can actually move because um, if we don't actually specify it then um, then it, we can get results that we actually don't like so we're gonna say that if the left if the x-axis which is quote unquote the y-axis if it's less than negative sorry about that yet again um, somebody from Apple was calling me because I made a complaint the other day but that's already solved anyways so um, like what I was saying for the about the dead zone so um, as you notice that when I pushed all the way up it went to negative one and when I pushed it all the way down it went to positive one so we want it so that when when it passed the negative 0 0.25 point then we start to actually do some movement or whatever because we don't actually uh, you can set when you want it to actually start detecting movement but we want to detect it after the negative 0 0.25 it seems to be more accurate that that way and so when they uh, so once they get past that we're gonna say position Y subtract equals move speed times Delta we're gonna say else if controller get axis and we're gonna get a left axis again but this time we're gonna say if it's greater than the dead zone so greater than 0 0.25 and we're gonna say plus equals to move speed and then we're gonna say get axis again but this time we're going to do the y-axis which is quote unquote the x-axis and we're going to say if it's less than the negative dead zone and we're going to say position x is subtract equals move speed times delta and let's remove, remove the extra uh, bracket and let's just say else if controller dot get axis Ouya dot x left y is greater than the dead zone then we're gonna say position x plus equals move speed okay so now let's run our program again let me make sure my controller is on and let's get ready to run so when I when I move my analog right, I move to the right. When I move it left, I move to the left and I move it up and blah, blah, blah. Now you can see that I'm having a bit of, it's like when I move it left, it might move up a little bit because maybe my I need to make the dead zone a bit higher so that it detects my input better. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.50. 
as we run it again. And yeah, so the input's a lot better now. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. So you've learned how to actually take in buttons and you've learned how to actually take in, um, take in access input. But I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but the D-pad buttons do not count as actual buttons, at least in the Xbox 360 layout. So we'll be looking into that later on. And another common problem is that, like, when you're making a video game, you want you want the user to be able to select a certain control layout, or you might not know what control layout they're using. You don't know if they'll be using a 360, a PS4 controller, a regular gamepad. You don't know. And sometimes in a game, you're gonna want the user to select what buttons they want to do some some things sort of like if you want uh, one button say one user wants circle to be the punch button but another user wants it to be square so you can allow the user to actually select certain buttons that they want to use with the help of the controller listener which i'll show you how to do uh, in the next tutorial so anyways thanks for watching don't forget to comment and subscribe and if you would like check out my apps they'll be in the description below so bye for now